Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. I've got a brand new brew for you this week with fresh out of Midnight Hunt's new Rakdos legend, Florian Voldaren Scion. I think this one's got some potential in the 99 of a lot of decks, but I want to take a look at how we can build a deck around him. First, let's take a look at what Florian can do. This 3-3 first striking vampire noble costs only 3 mana and reads, at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the total amount of life your opponents lost this turn. Exile one of those cards and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn. That is a full text box. But what it amounts to is that Florian can get you a pseudo-tutor on your turn. Similar to, but a little different than, the massive scry value a commander like Alibu, Ancient Witness, can net you. With the noted upside that you get to cast the card, and the downside that you only have essentially your second main phase and end step to cast the card. If we're building around this ability, we want to ensure we have as many sources as possible that deal damage to our opponents without costing mana. What do I mean by this? With Florian's ability triggering at the start of our post-combat main phase, it means that we have the entire first part of our turn to deal as much damage to our opponents as possible. The ability counts all damage dealt to opponents, so the wider we can go with damage, the better. We only have the latter half of our turn to cast the spell, which we do have to cast, so we'll need our mana up and available. Hence, we'll want as many effects as possible that deal damage to each of our opponents in our upkeep, pre-combat main phase, and combat phase to dig as deep as possible into our libraries as we can with Florian. Florian's ability is the perfect mix of card quality and card quantity. It's proof that drawing one card out of six is better than drawing a random two cards. The more we get to look at, the more we can cultivate our hands, boards, and game plan with exactly what we need at any time. There are a few similar commanders that like this strategy, typically going by the Group Slug archetype. Thantis the Warweaver, Mogus, God of Slaughter, and Neheb the Eternal all spring to mind as variations on this theme. Belby is another similar commander that likes this style of play, this Group Slug style. This one is the same kind of trigger as Florian in your post-combat main phase to make you mana. So when looking at cards to include, Belby's black selection is a good place to start. In fact, Florian would be right at home in the 99 of a Mogus deck, and Neheb fits seamlessly in the 99 of a Florian deck. The overlap between these archetypes is very tight. However, Thantis and Mogus just care about chipping down opponents' life totals, not when we chip down their totals. You'll find decks involving these two have lots of effects that trigger on opponents' turns. And while that's fine, we may want some of those effects in a deck with Florian just for value's sake, we are going to want to look at more effects from Neheb's builds in order to allow us to get further into our libraries in the post-combat phase. The biggest thing we'll want is a steady source of free damage. Anything that just happens is best. My favorite is Palace Siege, which, when we choose dragons, will help us see at least six cards of our libraries every one of our post-combat main phases thanks to Florian's ability. It's effects like this we'll want to pack the deck with. Subversion is very similar, as is Court of Ambition if our opponents can't discard cards. These effects are a little pricey at 4 and 5 mana respectively, but being able to look at 3, 6, or 9 cards of our library with Florian ensures we can smooth mana curves and find answers very effectively. Smaller effects that trigger automatically are essential as well. Creatures with abilities that trigger in your upkeep are big bonuses. Indulgent Tormentor triggering in your combat phase, Sin Prodder and Stormfist Crusader both triggering in your upkeep, are damage dealers to opponents and each opponent. These abilities don't cost you mana to use, leaving you with resources to cast whatever you get to grab with Florian's ability in your post-combat phase. One of my favorite effects here is on Loyal Subordinate. With just this zombie and Florian, you get to look at 9 cards in your post-combat phase. That's fantastic value, essentially getting to tutor 10% of your library. Creatures with tap abilities that deal damage are really ideal here too, especially those that deal damage to each opponent. 
Spear Spewer is pretty innocuous on its own, but when each tap lets you look three cards deeper with Florian, it becomes a good value engine. Thermo Alchemist is the same way. Though a better blocker, and with the potential to deal a bit more damage if you're casting spells in your pre-combat main phase, even if you just get to untap him once doing a bit more damage, the incidental card advantage is ideal. Viashino Heretic is one of my favorite includes in a deck like this, as a 2 mana activation cost is minor, and can wreak havoc with disproportionate value. 2 mana to blow up a 6 mana artifact and deal 6 damage is a great trade-off. And lastly, creatures with big splashy tap abilities are great here too, namely Tree of Perdition and Heartless Hidetsugu. These two can result in huge swings of life totals, which dig you through almost your entire library. That's nasty for your opponents, and can result in win-the-game scenarios for you. I would also include a few more effects like this in the deck on spells. Anything that can have life totals results in a lot of value for us. Fraying Omniscience, for instance, costs 5 mana, but lets us dig that much deeper into our decks. But Chris, I hear a lot of you say, that means we won't have mana to cast spells. And you are correct, but Florian's ability does say play the card. Meaning, if you know you won't be able to cast something you can grab, you can get a land to hit a land drop, or you can just grab a land if you want to thin your deck a little bit, leaving it in exile. These aren't ideal scenarios, but they're definitely not entire wastes of Florian's ability. In these colors, we also have some very strong options in both Pestilence and Pyrohemia. Enchantments that deal damage to everyone, can help kill small creatures, and essentially dig us three deeper with Florian for just a single mana. Being that Florian isn't the biggest boy on the block, they may not always make the cut, but two mana to see six cards is a really decent rate. We can also include some damage doublers in the deck like Furnace of Wrath or Dictate of the Twin Gods. These act as value multipliers for our damage dealers, but I would exercise caution. Your opponents benefit from this as much as we do, and we are not going to be the most defensive deck in the world. When it comes to spells we want to cast, we're going to want to be mindful of the number of instants we have in the deck. It's great to include them, of course, but with Florian's ability, it essentially turns them all into sorceries, as we only have until the end of our turns to cast them. That means we'll want to favor sorceries, enchantments, and creatures, especially as they'll be the ones netting us free, consistent damage. This does raise the question, what's our finisher? Are we just hoping to bleed out opponents with our incremental damage and hope they don't finish us off first? I'd go the route of damage doublers and life loss doublers as our game enders. In addition to the damage doublers I mentioned earlier, we have options like Wound Reflection and Archfiend of Despair to ratchet up our incremental damage and dig us deeper and deeper until we can hit an X spell like Torment of Hailfire or Grey Merchant of Asphodel for that last burst of damage. Now lastly, we have an option for another damage doubler to be included in Obosh the Prey Piercer. This companion can either fit in the 99 of the build, doubling damage done by odd-costed sources we control, or we could build with Obosh as the companion and have a consistent access to him. And I am always up for a challenge, so I've actually put together a build with Obosh as the companion, linked below. We have the potential for high damage, high mana generation, and consistent card quality generation thanks to our commander. These two are a match made in heaven. So check out my list and let me know in the comments what you think about Florian. Is he a contender for the commander of a great group slug list? Or is he just a vampire that wants to bleed everyone a little bit? Or is he looking to take everyone's heads off? Thanks for watching folks, and as always, good luck and have fun. Before we wrap up today's video, I do want to remind everybody again about our big 5,000 subscriber celebration giveaway. You have a chance to win a full 100 card Marin of Clan Nell Toth deck. This is a deck valued at over $250, but if we reach our subscription goals on the channel, we can ratchet that up to over 500. 
Just subscribe to the channel, check out the video linked up top and in the description below, you can see the thumbnail here, and you're entered. For bonus entries, you can check out my Twitter with ways to enter, and patrons at every level get additional entries into the draw. Good luck to everybody who entered, and thank you once again for getting us to this fantastic milestone. I could not do this without each and every one of you.